Hello, hello, hello. Hey, there we go, guys. Um, we have just started our live stream. I hope you folks are all well. Um, I want to say hello. Um, we have got some new folks joining us this week. Um, we are doing some very exciting things. This is one of my favourite things to draw in the whole wide world. Um, as it happens, this is something I used to do all the time when I was a little kid. Um, I don't know why, I just used to love drawing fantastically oversized hamburgers and ridiculously delicious ice creams. Um, and that is what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do today. Um, and there's actually a couple of tips. Uh, tips and techniques that you're going to see when you're creating these kind of things um, that you will be able to then use when you're creating your own later on and that is exactly what I want you to do uh, because you will have some uh, fantastic illustrations that look a little bit like this uh, for those of you wondering by the way my printer is not uh, playing uh, as I would like it to today so I've got uh, my, my wife's phone here instead um, and in fact you can even see I've got the magenta ink cartridge on my hands oh, a pesky thing um, Anyway, we're going to be doing some lovely, lovely stuff that looks just like this. Um, and I can't wait to see what you guys produce. And then when you are done, when you are finished, I want you guys to upload your work to my website. Uh, sorry, up upload your work to my Facebook page because I want to see your, your stuff. And whoever I decide has produced the most beautiful, fantastic and wonderful um, illustrations is going to get a free copy of my award winning picture book called I Have an Orange Juicy Drink. Um, I will dig one of those out for you, um, but for everybody, uh, just to celebrate today, uh, because I'm doing something a little bit special, um, I'm going to be uh, giving you guys something very special indeed. Everyone who is joining with my session today can get 50% off the cost of that book. If you guys do want to go to my website, um, shortandsmiley.com, uh, just put either the hardback or the softback into your, your basket, uh, and you can get 50% off by typing in um, thanks50. If you're feeling particularly cheeky, um, you can type in thanks 51 um, and see what happens. Whatever you do, do not type in thanks 52. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely don't do that. Only type in thanks 50 or 51. Um, but it is to celebrate something because uh, I can tell you guys, um, as you know, I'm a picture book author and illustrator, but my very next picture book um, is going to be coming out next year. And it is one of the big four publishers in the UK. Um, I can't say too much more about it at this stage. I hope you understand. Um, but I am very, very excited about it. So to celebrate, uh, either go to my, my website and you can buy a copy of my book at half the, well, 50% off or 51% off just by using either thanks 51 or thanks 50. Like I say, whatever you do, do not go there and type in thanks 52. Um, <laughs> right. Anyway, that is enough waffle from me. Um, so what we are going to do today is start doing uh, some fantastic illustrations like these. Um, it's very therapeutic, strangely therapeutic, um, and we are going to be doing this in my sketchbook. So grab your pens, grab your pencils, uh, grab your paper, uh, grab your nose as well for good measure. Is everybody grabbing their nose? I hope so. Um, and we will get stuck in. A special shout out today goes to uh, Zach, who turns 13. Happy birthday to Zach. Um, he's a fantastic illustrator that's been joining in with us for the last few weeks. And also to George, who was last week's winner uh, drawing the pirate ships. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree, his stuff uh, from last week. If you go onto my website, you'll be able to see it. I've got a blog post up with his artwork. Uh, it looks very much like mine. Uh, and it's got some lovely, lovely colouring in. So well done, guys. Anyway, right, let's get started. Um, we will now be doing uh, the hamburger first, and I want to create a fantastic tower burger. So if I start drawing and it starts to go off the top of the page because it is that big, I need you guys to say, hey, Andy, it's gone off the top of the page. Uh, and at that point, I will then do something vaguely sensible, like uh, move my page so you guys can see it. So we're going to start off with the bottom. Um, there's lots of juicy things that are going to be all the way through it, but to keep things sensible and to keep it in order, we're going to begin right down here. So what we will do is start drawing with, um, it's, I like to do like almost a really wide U shape. And then, so that's going to be, and, and this is so important, I should say, by the way, guys, don't draw the top of the burger bun at the bottom. Start with the bottom. So copy what I do here and you'll see why in just one second. We go down, we curve at the bottom, and then it's a really wide letter U, nice flat bottom. And then the other side of it is going to be right about there. OK. Now, I haven't drawn the top and this is so, so super duper. OK. Uh, hello there, guys. I can see some people like uh, Natalia and Lexi are saying hello. Uh, hi there, Pitts. Um, and lots and lots of lovely folk from uh, all over the place. London. Wow. Hi from Jack. Hello, guys. Uh, I, I will try and say hello to as many people as I can. But um, as my wife will be able to tell you, I can't multitask. And so for that very reason, uh, I will try and focus as much as I can on telling you how to do awesome drawings um, and I will try and squeeze in the odd hello if I can. Um, right, so this is at the start of our burger, okay? 
Um, but this is really important. You do not want to draw the top of any of the ingredients as we start building it up. And that is because we want to make it look like it's laid on top of itself. And what I mean by that is this. If I start to draw the top of this little burger bun, like so, I'm going to leave a little gap there. I'm going to need to leave another little gap there. And the reason for this is that this is where I'm going to have some juicy, juicy ketchup that has been squirted onto my burger. And so you'll see if I put in a little bouncy splodge like that at the top and a little bouncy splodge there, I've then got some space where I can make it look like it is oozing out of the burger and down, dripping down the side of the bun. You can do the same over here. It doesn't have to be quite as big. But it's just enough. And in fact, this little drip's going to be a bit smaller. It's kind of like doing a raindrop. Kind of like doing a raindrop, but not quite. Okay. So that is just going to be some extra ketchup that is squirting out the side of our bun. I should say as well, by the way, guys, I had lots of lovely suggestions about what we could actually put into this bun because we, you know, it could have anything. It could be a beef burger, a hamburger, um, it could be a vegan burger. It could have anything you want in it. Um, but what I always like to do is put a, a great big patty in there. And for you guys, this can be whatever you want. It's actually quite easy to do. All you have to do is do a little curve at this side, like so. And it wants to be around about the thickness of the bun, same sort of size. And again, same on the other side. So it's a letter C over there and a backward C over here. And you might be thinking, right, okay, Andy, I get it. I'm going to draw my bun all the way along there. No, you're not. And like I said to you before, we always have to remember to leave these gaps. Uh, for those of you that like uh, your chemistry, this is just like Dmitri Mendeleev discovering the periodic table. Um, and I, I will appreciate laughter from the four grown-ups who probably find that funny. Um, we're now going to put a little bit of cheese on top because as many people have suggested, like uh, Tracy and, and a few other guys, you have to have cheese on a burger. It is the law. You can't not have it. Uh, I like Lucy's idea of wild boar, but no, we're going to do this with some cheese. And here's how we make it look like it is a real hot super duper burger. We start off over here on the left hand side. Doing a little tiny little C, OK, and it's going to be smack bang right on the edge of the big one that we've done. And then this is going to be a bit wibbly and a bit wobbly and a bit bouncy as it goes towards the middle. Now we're not going to get to the middle. We're going to stop a third of the way along. And at this point now, we're going to turn it into a straight line that's going down a little bit. And then it's going to stop halfway along the burger. And then it's going to be a straight line going back up. And then as we get about three quarters of the way along now, We've got a little quarter of the burger left to go. We're going to start to make it a little bit more wibbly wobbly again. And the reason for this is that the type of cheese that they use in fine establishments such as McDonald's and Burger King has a tendency to melt. And we want to make ours look exactly like that. The edge of it that's poking out isn't too hot so that it'll melt. And that's why we can still see, as I'm doing here, it's like a little V, a really thin one. And you can even put in a little line down there like that. And it makes it look like that's your slice of cheese that's just falling out the edge of the burger. Whereas the rest of it has all got so hot, it's gone squidgy. Okay. Um, wow, guys, we have now got over 200 people joining in today's session. This is fantastic. Uh, I can't quite believe it. Um, this is wonderful. Let's keep going then, uh, and we'll get on to the next bit. Now, personally, I like to have bacon in my burgers. Um, the great thing about bacon is that you can take everything else out of a, a bacon burger. You can take out the cheese. You can take out the the bread you can take out everything and you still have something that tastes absolutely delicious bacon is wonderful stuff so let's see about putting some of this on top and again you can see i haven't finished the cheese off because i've not drawn the top on okay and here's how we do it we start rather than having a solid line we do a big curvy rolling wave all the way along like this because bacon when you cook it has a tendency to go crispy and it curls up i'm stopping around about three quarters of the way along here and this is because I want to make it look like there's more than one bit of bacon. So it's gone wiggly, wiggly, really nice and long all the way over. Then we stopped. And at this point, 
I'm going to do another line. I'm not going to have it starting, you know, it's not going to be touching the other one. It's going to start just, oh, you know, very thin, very little thin white space. And then there we go. And that's going to curl around underneath too. And this is going to be our bacon. And our cheese is going to stop where our bacon is. Okay, so let's draw the rest of the bacon. Here we go. We're going to go back to our starting point over here. And we're going to go and draw another little curve that is following the same path as the last one. Doesn't matter if it gets a bit thinner or thicker, that's okay, because when bacon gets cooked, it does change shape a bit. That's really not a problem. And that one, and there you go. I'm making it look like it curls on top of the other little slice of bacon we've got. Then this one here, here we go. We're going to do the same thing. And this one's curling round, look, okay? But it, at the minute, it looks really thin like a piece of spaghetti. Um, hi, Jack in Bristol. Um, oh, Emma wants us to do lettuce. Yes, don't worry, we're going to do lettuce. OK, we will do, I promise you. Um, but we need to make it look like it's got a bit of thickness to it. And here's how we do it. Once you draw any shape, and I should say it doesn't matter what it is. This is a little top tip from Andy here. We're, uh, we're jumping to one side. You guys don't have to draw this. This is just a tip. Let's say that I was going to do anything at all in the whole world, like even my letter A for my first name. You can make anything look like it's got thickness to it by adding lines that all go in the same direction off from its corners and then suddenly it looks like it's really thick and chunky. Okay, so that is a 3D A. We're going to do the same thing with the bacon. We're going to give it a little bit of thickness and the way we're going to do it with our bacon is by doing this. Over at one side here, we're going to draw from the very top of it, we're going to draw a line out to the left and it can curve down ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be perfectly horizontal. And then there too, we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. And then this is the important bit. When we join it up, we don't just draw a straight line. Instead, you see this curve we've got here on the front of our slice of bacon? We're also going to have it at the back. So it's going to be curving around like that. And what that means is that we end up with a 3D slice of bacon. Bacon is always best when it's streaky, as everybody knows. And anybody who says otherwise is completely wrong. And what we have to do to make it look streaky is to put some little curves on like this. And those curves are, again, the same shape as the front and the same shape as the back of our bacon. And a couple of like that, and that can be bacon that you then colour in. We're not done quite yet with this little 3D effect. What we're also going to do is add a little bit more of, uh, of the 3D effect too. So in other places too, uh, we're going to add some more. So here we go. I'm going to do a little bit here. And remember, it needs to start at the top. And then whatever shape it is curving along here, at the back of the bacon, it needs to do the same. Um, I can then add some little streaky lines. And you don't have to put them on everywhere, okay? In fact, I might just do one there like that. And I can even do some underneath, like this. And these little lines, they just start off either at the top or the bottom of your bacon. They go perfectly horizontally off. And then they curve at the end in the same way that the, the first line that we drew curves as well, okay? Um, I can see somebody there saying it keeps cutting out. Don't worry, if it keeps cutting out for you, I will be uploading this finished video too, and it'll go on after this session. So if it doesn't work for you today, it's not the end of the world. You can still catch it afterwards, and it'll be on my webpage. Uh, right, so I think this is looking pretty good. We've got some nice looking bacon here. Um, you can then, where your melted cheese is, you can then sort of put in a few little lines to show where the cheese sort of finishes. But now we need to have a tiny little person who is going to be eating our bacon. And I think it'd be fun to have him sat here on top of our food. He's going to be poking out of some lettuce. Um, so whoever it was that said they wanted lettuce, do remind me. Uh, I think it was, oh, goodness me. Was it Anna? I can't remember. Emma, sorry. Emma, I beg your pardon, wanted lettuce. Let's do some of that. So the way to do it is to go and draw a nice little round circle for this guy's hand. And then we're going to have another one over here. So two big circular hands like that. And then we are going to put in here a little slice of bacon that's got a big bite mark out of it. So it's going to be almost big like a book because this person is super duper tiny. There's one hand, there's the other. And this slice of bacon here is going to have teeth marks because somebody has been chomping the bacon himself. To make it look 3D, you can do the same thing as I was doing before. Put a little line on, 
and then draw the same shape as you had before. You can even do that where the bite marks are. It makes it look like he's got some bacon. Okay. So somebody's going to be eating this. To keep it nice and simple today, I'm going to give this guy just a little bald head. So I'm going to draw his head poking out from just where the uh, the hand meets the bacon over here. I'm going to draw this shape. I'm going to um, what I'd normally do is draw sort of like uh, join it up again. It's not a square. It's not a rectangle. It's not a curve. That's not not a circle. Something in between. Um, I'm going to leave a little bit of space here. And that's going to be where we'll have a little dollop of ketchup on this guy's head, because that's just fun. So I'm going to leave that space, I'm going to forget that corner for the time being, and then I'm going to draw down here the side of his cheek like this. We're going to put two little dots for eyes on him. And they're going to be smack bang in the middle of his head, and they're going to be looking down at his burger. Now, if you like to do googly eyes, you can do googly eyes. I like to do uh, eyes that are sort of two little black dots like this. I'm also going to make him look uh, like he's got a full mouth of food, by doing a little curve here, that's his cheek. And that little curve there makes it look like he's got a, a nice plump cheek. And I'm gonna draw a little line for his smile there, okay? So he's having a nice time. I've just had an idea for the guys that were saying they may be struggling uh, with um, the streaming, that it's, it's buffering a little bit. Let me just go and shout at somebody and see if we have got stuff getting downloaded. Darling, can you stop downloading for just one sec? Or, or... Thank you very much. Sorry about that interruption, guys. I just thought I'd see if that would make any difference to anyone. And if so, it might make things a little easier. Right. So to return to what we were doing, um, we're going we're gonna to put a little splodgy ketchup, just like we had at the bottom here. And to do that, we're going to go curvy, 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 cutting off the corner of his head. And to make it look super professional, we're not just going to draw over the top of it. Watch this. This is a really, really key bit. To make it look like he's 3D, we're not going to start drawing the rest of the ketchup here, right where it finishes on his head. Instead, we're going to start ever so slightly further along. When we do that, we do a little curve upwards, and we go along. And then when we do round here, same thing. We're not going to join up right where the, uh, the little line ends there. Instead, it's going to curve all the way around like this. And now it looks like... It's actually a splodge on his head and it's going round the top over the top of his head. Okay. Um, okay, so here we go. I think we're going pretty well here, guys. We've got some uh, nice little folks. We've got, um, sorry, we've got a nice little folk. We've got some lovely ingredients, but now we need lots and lots of lettuce. And lettuce is great fun to draw. Lettuce is super duper easy and it can take up lots and lots of lovely space. So what we do, start off over here. And this bit, I'm going to do a roundabout. It's not quite all the way up his head. It's about, ooh three quarters of the way up his head. I'm going to do a little squiggle and it's going to be wiggly woggling along like this. Okay. And you can do lots of these little wiggly woggles. And this is our lettuce. And it's almost like they are little worms that are sort of dancing around in space. And you're going to think, Andy, crazy. We don't want worms in our burgers. No, we don't. We want fantastic looking lettuce. And that, my friends, is exactly what we're going to get. But when you shred lettuce, uh, especially fine quality lettuce rather than just like iceberg stuff, it goes all crinkly. Um, hi there, Grace. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and again, like we did with the, um, uh, the, the bacon underneath where we add little extra lines on it, that's what we're going to do here too. So when we have got something that is looking pretty good, like lots of little worms that are all squiggling on top of each other, uh, you can then start to add some extra little flicks at the beginning and at the ends of these lines. And it starts, when you add it all together, it starts to look like lettuce that is all chopped together. And I know you might be thinking, oh, that sounds crazy, Andy. No, I promise you, it does. And when you colour it in, I recommend that you use a light green and a dark green, whether that's pencil or pen or whatever you want. And then you colour in some bits in light green and some bits in dark green. So, you know, maybe this little shape up here is light green, some of it's dark green. And it looks absolutely brilliant. That's how we get the effect of lettuce. Okay. Right then. Um, 
I also love in my burger. Somebody suggested onion, and there was lots of arguments on the message boards about whether or not we should have onion in a burger. Yes, we should. But the best thing in a, in a burger when it comes to onion is to put in onion rings. Okay, so they're deep fried, and onion rings are very special when we come to drawing our, our ingredients because they don't want to have solid outlines. Instead, watch this. We want to have our onion rings, and I'm deliberately drawing two. I'm going to do one over here on the side, one over here. We're going to make them so they've got little fuzzy edges, and that's because they're supposed to be nice and crispy. And so what I do with my pen, and you can do the same with your pencil if you want, I do lots of little dots that are very close together, like this. And it's the same sort of shape as a, a burger bun. A, yeah, a burger, sorry, I should say. But... It's just very, very fine and a little bit smaller. OK, so it's half as wide there. Look. And so doing these dots over and over again gives it a sort of fuzzy effect. And that's what happens when you fry onion rings. And to make it look extra believable, what we do is we put some extra dots in the middle, not loads. But the trick is to bunch these little dots up towards the edge and leave fewer and fewer nearer the middle. OK, when you do that, it makes it look like the edge is fuzzy. Maybe just one or two in the middle there like that. But it makes it look nice and crispy. OK, uh, onions and, and this technique, by the way, is really nifty, especially if you wanted to do things like, say, sheep as well. Anything that's got a fuzzy edge and then is um, uh, you want to make it look 3D, like a, say a sheep, you know, with a bit of depth to him. Do lots of these little dots around the edge and then fewer and fewer as you get towards the middle. Uh, yes, Jenny Stewart, it is pointillism, thank you. Now, the next onion ring, he's not going to be perfectly flat. Instead, we're going to do something else with that one. We're going to make it look like it goes up and over his head because he's poking his head out and he's taking up space in the burger. So it makes sense that he's pushing the ingredients up too. So again, I'm going to do a very similar sort of one. Very similar to before, but this time, look, it's getting pushed up out of the way. So that one's not horizontal anymore. And the more people you stick in your burgers, the more it's going to appear that things are all disjointed and all over the shop. So if you wanted to just have a normal burger, you wouldn't obviously have this on an angle. But when you've got people hiding inside it, like this. That's what you want to do. OK, so looking nice. I'm getting quite hungry already. I don't know about you guys. Um, we're now going to put another burger on top. So whether that's meat, um, you know, beef, lamb, vegan, whatever you want, that's fine. Um, but again, we're going to do the bottom of him. We're going to do a curve over here to show where he is. So he's got a nice thickness to him. And this time, He's going to be up here on an angle like that. And now we're going to do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of sauce. And this sauce is going to wiggle all the way along, not a couple of splodges like this. And it could be mayonnaise, it could be mustard, whatever you guys fancy. The trick is to make it look real is to do a few little wavy lines and then every now and again, do a great big curvy drip like a raindrop that goes all the way, almost all the way down perfectly like that. We're then going to do another one. It's going to go down a bit. And then another one that's bunching up like that, almost like a perfect drip. And there we go. OK, it wiggles all the way over to the side. Depending upon how much sauce you like on your burgers will affect how much you put on. Um, you could even put, say, let's say that one is um, mustard so that's going to be yellow you can even put extra sauce on top and i'll show you how to do that too so you do a little curve at this side and that side and then we do the same thing again wiggly lines and now it's the case that we've got something that looks like it's got two layers of sauce on i know i haven't quite finished drawing the top of it yet um but don't worry about that. So here we go. I'm going to draw a little bit more. And this time, actually, for the, the sauce on top, because I'm doing two sauces, I'm going to leave a little gap. And I'm going to try. This is tricky, but you can do it. I'm going to try and make it look 
like it's leveling out. So whereas our onion rings came along and went whoosh up like that, the sources are where we're going to start to level it out a bit so that it ends up not being on an angle like our onion ring is. Instead, it starts to get a bit more horizontal. Ooh, hot sauce. I like hot sauce too. Good shout. Um, don't worry if you're using a chunky pen, Claire. Not a problem. Whatever yours ends up looking like is absolutely fine. You will be hungry by the end of this, I promise. Um, I also love to put in fried onions into my burgers too. So with this, I'm going to have a little guy eating the fried onions here. We're going to give him another little round hand, like so. Whee! Uh, we're going to have another round hand here because he's going to be poking off the side and they're going to be very close to each other. And he's going to look a little bit like this dude just hiding over here. OK. Um, he's going to be sitting here and all these little fried onions, little flecks of fried onion that have been nicely chopped up, are going to be poking along. And the way to draw your fried onion is to do a little... Um, shape like this. I'm trying to think how you'd best describe it. I don't know what you'd call this actually. Uh, I don't know. It almost looks a little bit like, if you imagine say a candle flame, that's a pretty good way of describing it. If you imagine a candle flame which is a curvy shape like that, that's the kind of shape we're doing. Oh dear, I've cut myself. That was silly. Oh dear, I've got blood all over my drawing. That was silly too. Not sure how I've managed that. Did anybody see what happened there? Where there is blame, there is a claim. Right, um, so this little shape is going to be a pretty nifty one to use again and again and again on all sorts of different angles because it can make it look like you have lots of little slices of chopped onion all sat. And not all of them have to be that perfect shape. Some of them might be sort of like a crescent shape, like a moon. Some of them might be pointed up. Some of them might be pointing down. But all of these little shapes, which are just pointy, thin, and then pointy again at the other end, they want to lay on top of each other. And they want to be around about halfway up the top of this little dude's hand here that we've drawn. Okay, so the second hand on top, they just want to sit on top of each other like this. And doing them sort of semi-random is the best way to go, because no burger is going to be perfectly lined up. Everything about it will be a little bit wonky in some way. And then, once we've got all these little ingredients drawn on there, we've then got the opportunity to put on this little fella's head. And he's going to be peeking around, nibbling on one of these little bits of onion. So again, we could even draw this bit of onion that he's holding, put a little bite mark in it perhaps, something like that. And there's a little trick to make him look like he's really sort of like wedged in the burger nicely. I'm going to draw his arm. And arms are dead, dead easy if you've got a fella like poking over a wall or poking around a burger. Where you've got the round circle for his hand, all we have to do is draw a line off it that then goes back towards it. So it curves around. And that looks like his elbow. See, I've got one of those too. It's really handy. Um, and you can do the same up here on the other side. This is his other elbow. And he's got his hands and his elbow. He can then put his head in. This guy won't have any burger sauce sat on him, so he's just going to look like this. Two little dots for his eyes. And again, a nice chunky smile. So a little curve, it's like a little flick, um, just to one side of his eyes. And then a little smile like that, because he's stuffing his face. Uh, also, to show he's on an angle, it's quite fun to draw a little baseball cap falling off. Very, very cool. Very easy to do as well. Um, if you're ever drawing somebody moving at speed, like zooming along in a car, super easy. Just draw a little diagonal line like this. OK. And that's kind of 45 degrees, so it's not going up, it's not going down. Um, and then baseball caps, we take the top bit and do a little semicircle. And just as it's about to join up halfway along, he says, halfway along our line, we stop it just before it gets there. And then we do a little thin line that curves around like that. Okay, and this gives us a baseball cap. And there we go. So his baseball cap is um, falling off whilst he is chomping away. Right, how are we doing, guys? Is it going quite well? I think we've got a lot of fantastic looking burgers on the way. Um, I think you seem to be enjoying yourselves. I can see lots of happy comments. Some people have got medium sized burgers. I wonder if it's medium and well done. I wonder. I wonder. Um, 
We will put in a few more bits just to get to the top. And then, once we've got our burger sorted, we're going to be moving on to doing our fantastic Sunday with our little scuba diver who's stuck at the bottom eating his way out. Um, okie dokie. So, um, let's get started on the, the next bit of the burger, which is going to be one more big chunky meat patty, or vegan patty, depending upon your preference. Um, very easy. We've already got one side of it covered up because of this guy's elbow. So all we have to do over here is the big round C, the one that you're familiar with. Oh, look, our little C, oh, sorry, our big C, has disappeared into all the onions that we've got. And again, we're going to draw as we go along a little line horizontally. And then at this point, this is going to be a bit more of our cheese. So we can start to be a bit wibbly and then go down into a nice little point, just like we did down here, right in the middle of the burger. And it can come up on the other side. Go a bit wibbly again. That's showing us where the cheese is melted. In fact, you know what I should have done? I should have made it all of this bit over here a bit wibbly. Oh my goodness. So the thing about being a professional illustrator is you still go wrong every now and again. You still forget to make everything wibbly where it needs to be wibbly perfectly. Um, Emma, no, as I'm saying, Emma is asking, mine's is wonky. Does that matter? No, Emma, because mine's is a bit wonky too. Um, we're then going to add the little lines, the really nifty thin ones, right in here at the little pointy V. And that is what makes it look like it is an actual slice of cheese that is melting. Um, and this time, because we're near the top, we're going <laughs> to we're going to put um, something on that's very controversial. This split the most opinions, actually, the next thing we put on. Um, and then over here, we're just going to do a wibbly wobbly line this time. Pretty much straight, almost perfectly straight, but not quite. Um, if yours is le leaning to one side when somebody says it's wonky, it doesn't really matter. Because what you can just do is if, add a few other ingredients that are leaning the other way. And then you can make it look like it's all sort of stacked up like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Uh, right. The controversial bit then. The bit that somebody might curl their nose up at, up at in disgust. I am going to put gherkins into my burger. Oh, yes. I love gherkins on the burger. I think they're one of the greatest inventions um, since Mr. Rodney Sandwich invented the sandwich. So here we go. I'm going to do lots of very thin slices like this. Um, all it is is a little curve then a flat line and then it curves back round and these next to each other and occasionally stacked on top of each other like that one are how we are going to do our gherkins and look at all of these lovely lovely gherkins sat on top of each other I'm going to double stack mine gosh I love gherkins if you're offended by this if this is something that's just too much for you do feel free to sit it out um, but even so the technique so making it look like, say, here, watch this, when it curves around the edge, it drops off and droops just a bit, not fully, but a little bit. That is something, oh, I can just imagine eating all of those. That'd be amazing. Okay, right. If you are running out of room, room and I can see Paula saying she is, her, her paper is going to be too, uh, too short. Don't just try and squeeze it in. That's a cardinal sin of drawing. Instead, what you should do is go and get an extra bit of paper. So something like this and stick like if you if your paper ended here get an extra bit of paper and stick it on top and then you can keep drawing and then sellotape your bits of paper together on the back uh, and it'll make it look way 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 better than if you just tried to squeeze it in okay um sarah harris if i can see you saying you hate gherkins if you win the uh, the picture book this week i will send you some free gherkins through the post just for you um so we'll have to see uh, same for you liam okay right so the final bit then, let's put our um, our last bit on top. Um, now, depending upon what you like, this last bit could be, um, well, I say it could be anything. I, I like to put on a few other little bits and pieces into my burgers. If you've never tried uh, mozzarella, mozzarella is amazing on a burger. Um, you can put on a little bit more lettuce. Um, I always think it's fun to draw just something extra healthy in there. So mine's is going to have not the same lettuce as before, but it's going to have long, thin and wispy. bits of salad that are coming out and all these are gentle curves with a flick on the end and you can see there I swapped directions so on the left hand side I had them all pointing that way on the right hand side I've got them pointing that way or the way around okay um, and this is now the top of our burger we are going to put our burger bun on top um, Oh, somebody's asked about tomatoes. If it helps, imagine these are tiny little slices of tomato rather than gherkin. 
There you go. So the top of our burger, again, it's going to be nice and plump and fresh bread, kind of like the bottom, but this time it wants to be bigger. The trick to drawing a burger bun is that it should go round and then just really nicely curve up. It's not going to be flat and like um, a rectangle like this was. Instead, it's going to... Sorry, I'm pointing down there. You guys can't see. Uh, it's not going to be flat like this one. It's going to be curvy on top, almost like, you know, when you draw the top of a toadstool or a mushroom. You do that. But here's a handy tip and trick. By all means, draw... If you don't like sesame seeds on top of your burgers, then you don't want to leave the little gaps. But if you love sesame seeds, leave gaps like that. And I shall show you for why. Uh, when you draw these little shapes and leave the gaps, it gives you the option of them putting dots on. And a bit like I said, with regards to um, the the other bits that I did, the, um, the onion rings where you do the little dots, you can do something very, very similar here with the sesame seeds. And as some of the more observant ones of you will have realised, I am stalling because I have not got the right pen in my hand. In fact, it was in my pocket all along. Um, but for those of you that, you know, noticed that I was um, fluffing out my words, it was because I couldn't find this pen. Um, this is one of the few instances where I like to um, use a little fine liner to do my drawing rather than something thicker. And in these little gaps, I'm going to put a nice round sesame seed like that. OK. And you can even, every now and again, put two next to each other, if you want to, like so. You don't have to do that all the time. It looks a bit weird if you have them sat on top of each other all the time. But there we go. You can see I've got a few of them equally spaced going around the edge of my burger. And this is the 3D effect again. This is a really cool thing to be able to do. We've got some that are sat right on top on the, I guess you'd call it like the horizon of the burger. Like if you imagine it was a, a hill or a planet or something, that's the, that's right on the horizon. Um, we are going to add some more, but watch where we put them, because this is key. You put lots of them, like little semicircles, on the edge of your burger. So where we've got the, the thick line, where we've got the top of the burger itself, you want to put quite a few in there. So occasionally you've got one or two there. Sometimes you might just have the one here. You might have two. Well, let's go three. Why not? OK. But this effect of having them like they're just peeping over the horizon makes it look like there's a lot there. And then when you're drawing the rest of them on, you want to add fewer and fewer as you come down your burger. So here we go. I'm going to have a fair amount. You know, pretty, pretty regularly spaced, not all in a line because they don't want to be perfect. The idea is they've been sprinkled on. But there's a lot of them, look. So there's plenty of these guys. And then, those are all really close to, you know, the top of the burger. At this point, I'm now going to start to do them a lot more sporadically. And this has the effect of making it look like your burger has had them dropped on the top and there are lots and lots and lots in the centre as there would be naturally. And then there's a few that just hang on to the edge of the burger rather than falling off the edge of it. Um, oh, somebody's just asked for steam off the top of the burger like it's super hot. Uh, we'll do that in one second, but we, we have one little fella to, to do extra and then I'll add some steam. Uh, I don't know Harrison Wyatt, I should say, I'm a McDonald. I'm not familiar with him. Um, right. We're going to add one last fella on top of our burger. If you need an extra piece of paper, that's that's fine. Grab an extra sheet of paper and you know stick it on top here so that you can then uh, draw your little dude. If you've still got space on your page, that's fine. Um, now for this guy, this is how I normally draw characters. When they're sort of uh, embedded into something like a burger like these two were, I've done them in a slightly unusual order. I've done the hands and things first, okay? But this one, this fella on top, I'm going to draw his head first. I'm going to make sure I can squeeze all of his head in. So watch this. So it's not quite a rectangle, not quite a circle, something in between. And then I'm going to draw because he's looking downwards. I'm going to be able to see his eyes quite low down on his head. So it's not halfway up. It's not near the top. It's actually in the bottom third of his head. And that makes it look like he's tilted and looking downwards. 
He's going to be very excited to be eating his burger. So I'm going to do a little smile. And then underneath, I'm going to do a curve down like that that comes back up. And you can see there, it's just it's tucked to one side of his, his mouth, uh, so one side of the little smile that we did. And then I'm going to colour in a little bit of it, leaving a tongue at the bottom. OK. Um, he's going to be very excited. He's going to have his cutlery stuck up in the air like this. So here we go. He's going to be swinging his arms up. One line up like that, straight from underneath his chin. That's going to give us the top of his arm. Same one underneath like that. It's going to give us the bottom of his arm. We'll need to stop so we can do his body, so it's not perfectly joined up with my burger yet. But I'll just do something like that, and that suggests that he's got his body there, look. Um, his hands, as you guys already know, I'm very lazy when it comes to drawing hands. Uh, I instead just do a nice big round uh, circle like that. And then here, we're going to give him a fork. And to do the forks is quite easy. You just draw a line like this, coming out of his hands. And then you get the letter U and you stick that through the middle of it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Straight line and then a U on top. Um, we then need to do the same on the other side. So this time we're going to do another line here that's coming up. Oh, and in fact, my burger's going to be in the way here, isn't it? There we go. We can just see, just see the other side of his, his arm. And then here we go. Big circle like that and this is where he's going to have his knife uh, knives are a little bit tricky but not by much all you have to do for those is draw a little um, square on top of his hand a tiny square like that and that is going to be um, the handle that he's holding on to and then to draw the the knife itself all it is is a straight line going up out of his hand and then to bring it back we don't just draw um, a perfectly straight line instead do a little curve at the top that ends up being a bit thicker at the bottom. So it's kind of like a triangle, but the hypotenuse is curved. The hypotenuse, guys, by the way, is the longest side on any triangle. Well, on any right angle triangle, anyway. Um, oh, no, I snuck some maths in again. I'm sorry, I don't mean to do that. First, I talk about Dimitri Mendeleev and the periodic table, and then I sneak something in about maths and hypotenuse. Um, if you want to add an olive, you can do uh, very easily. I've never done one of those on a, a burger before, but if you wanted to, you could stick an olive in. Uh, it would be on a toothpick, so you could draw a thin line like this. And then this time, it would be well, the same sort of shape as these guys' heads, actually. Something that's a little bit round like that. And then to one side, not in the middle, but to one side, you draw a circle. And the guys that come every week will know this one. Uh, when you're trying to draw a circle and put it on an angle, you don't draw it perfectly round instead. You tilt it so that it is something instead uh, that is a little squished. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to draw a little tilted circle like that, not perfectly round. And then that makes it look like, ooh, and a point on top, makes it look like we've got an olive sticking out of our burger. There we go. I hope that made your day, Omid. We've got an olive on our burger. Um, and actually, with all this lettuce, with all the onion, with all the olive, I think that's probably about four of your fruit and veg for the day, actually, isn't it? That's a really healthy burger to eat. Um, Right, guys, it is quarter past, so that is 45 minutes, but I love you so much, I'm not going to stop here. What I'm going to do instead is very quickly jump into this, and if you guys can stick with me for another 15 minutes until we get to half past, I will show you folks how to do this one here uh, and how to do the ice cream. Again, it is great, great fun. This one's just over and a little bit longer than uh, it normally would, but that's okay. So, uh, get a new piece of paper if you need to. Um, I don't recommend flipping your artwork over. I never recommend that. I always recommend that you start on a new piece of paper. Um, and what we're going to do at the bottom here, same sort of uh, position where you started your burger, we're going to draw a nice little horizontal line. And this horizontal line is going to be the bottom of our ice cream glass. So here we go. Okay, there we go. In fact, I'll make it a little bit wider just so it's got something to stand on. But it wasn't doesn't want to be too wide. It's about half the width of our burger, something like that. It is then going to curl up and around. So each side, you're going to add a little curly C on, like this. Like so. And then, it's not going to go flat. Instead, it's going to go up to a point, kind of like the opposite of our cheese that we drew. So here we go. It goes up. And it doesn't meet in the middle. I'm deliberately stopping before I get to the middle. There we go. For those of you that have got coat hangers at home, which is probably everyone, uh, it's kind of like the most part of a, a coat hanger. 
um, or it's like a, a rectangle where the middle have just sort of come up like a lever arch bridge. Okay. Um, hello there, Luke and Joseph from Stevenage. Hey, thank you for joining us today. Oh, yeah, the steam on the burger. I'm really sorry. I said, see, this is why I'm a professional illustrator and not a project manager because I forget stuff. So if you want to add steam to your burger, it's very easy. Um, I didn't say about this. You can just do two little curves and it's like the letter S. There you go. And it looks like steam coming off the burger. There you go. <laughs> right. So, um, Anna, you don't have any coat hooks or coat hangers. That's terrible. You have my sympathies. Um, now at this point, we're going to do two little straight lines that go perfectly straight up. And they want to be stopping at the same point. Um, it's made out of glass, so we want it to look believable. We want it to look real. And there's a really cool thing you can do, um, and it makes it look like it's one of those um, ice cream parlor glasses. So here where we've got a little coat hook, what we're going to do is three little, I call them bounces. So just watch what I do here. Little bounce like that. That takes me about a third of the way along. Then I'm going to do another one. It takes me two thirds of the way along. And that one takes me to the end. Okay. Uh, and that little effect there makes it look like it's a hexagonal um, ice cream bottom. Okay. Um, you can then make it look a little bit extra believable by putting diagonal lines that head off up towards where the ice cream is going to be. OK, um, that's just a nifty little trick. You don't have to do that bit if you don't want to. I just find it makes it look more realistic. And then this is the um, the trickiest bit. So take your time. Don't rush this bit at all, because if you get this wrong, you'll be kicking yourself whilst you do the rest of this um, uh, this artwork. So pay attention. Don't draw it. Just watch here. We curve out kind of like we're doing a semicircle. But we stop. So in fact, all we've done really there is a quarter of a circle. And at this point, it needs to shoot up, but on an angle. It's not going perfectly straight. If you do it too much, too much of a steep angle, it won't look right. And if you do it um, too wide, it'll look like it's a uh, sort of a wide open dish, too tall. It looks, well, you don't have any space for your ice cream, basically. So it wants to be, it's not 45 degrees, it's something like that. And then this really tricky bit is this bit here. Um, you can see that with my line, I've gone almost, well, probably a little bit wider than my base, but not by much. I'm going to do the same thing again here, a little sort of semicircle shape. And then again, it's going to shoot off up on an angle and it wants to be the perfect mirror image. And that's why it's so tricky to do. Because what tends to happen is that you get one thing that's too wonky over this way and one that's a bit too tall. Here we go. Okay. And that is the hardest bit. If you have to go away and practice that and try it again later, that's okay. It is really tricky to get these lines perfect. You could even do it in pencil first rather than your pen. And then once you've done it in pencil, go over it again. Um, the rest of this bit is actually quite easy and it's a lot, lot quicker than doing your um, your burger. So what we do here is a, a little C, as I call them, you know, the little flicking at the top. It's not perfectly round, but it's get, getting on for, uh, you know, a little curvy shape there. And this is going to be where we have got mountains and mountains and mountains of um, squirty cream on top. That's what we're going to end up with. OK, so here we go. The squirty cream wants to be a little bit like our squeezy sauce over here but because that was quite thin, though it went up and down a lot. This one isn't going to go up and down nearly as much. It's going to have one big curve like that. That's almost taking me a third of the way along. So it goes down and then up. It's then going to come down again and about well, two thirds or three quarters of the way along. I'm then going to put a nice big dribble. Really big dribble of cream that's sort of melting and falling all the way down our ice cream, okay? Um, and we're going to then make him look nice and fluffy and bouncy on top. So if you've done this nice big squirt of, of uh, cream that's sort of melting on the side, we're now going to make it look like uh, whipped cream and all fluffy. The way we do that is by doing a little um, curve on this side and then we're going to do a bounce. And for those of you that did the clouds with me last week, you'll remember this. It turns out a lot of the techniques that you use when you're an illustrator to do clouds are the same ones that you use elsewhere too. If you're doing trees, for instance, you can do that. Um, I'm going to bring it around. 
and it wants to be nice and big and fluffy try not to make it sort of you know flat bounces that won't look like it's been whipped very well at all this is instead going to be nice and thick um, we're also going to put a little fella who's stuck upside down in all of this so um, <laughs> it's quite easy to draw a fella looking upside down like he's stuck in the uh, in the ice cream it does look yummy I agree Claire um, this is going to be coming out at 45 degrees a little rectangle well part of a rectangle it almost looks like it's sort of a plank of wood or something you can imagine if it kept going you know it'd be a thin shape like that well we're just drawing this little rectangle sticking out at 45 degrees on the end of this rectangle we're going to put a circle because this is his hand and then where you've got his his hand poking out at the very top of that we're going to do a nice big curve it's like um kind of like the letter n or an upside down u It's going to join back up there with the ice cream. Now that's his tummy. That's his hand and his arm. And he's going to have two little feet that are just added on. These are nice big round curves. And there you go. There's a fella stuck upside down in your ice cream. Now, it often pays to make it look more believable by putting a few extra little splodges of cream around like this, around the edge. Makes it look a little bit more 3D. Um, and to give our picture a bit of balance, we've got... Oh, he's poking over the top of my picture there, isn't he? Um, we're now going to do our flake on the other side. And flakes are not perfectly straight. So don't draw a straight line sticking out on the other side. Instead, draw that just a wiggly line and then at the top we're going to draw a little sort of wiggly spiral see how it's wiggled around it's a circle that's turned into a spiral and then wiggly line all the way down again like so and for shading and putting detail on all flakes are, are just wiggly lines again and again some are a bit straighter than others but wiggly wiggly is good And I sometimes put flakes are funny ones. Sometimes if you just add little extra lines that cross over, it makes it look even more like an actual flake. Okay. Uh, we need a cherry on top too. So for this one, it's not a perfect circle. Um, I love drawing cherries. Um, peaches are the same, but here's how you do them. You imagine that we're going to draw a curve, but we stop and change our mind. So it doesn't go all the way up and around. And it's not a perfect circle. Instead, it wants to go down to a little sort of flat curve like that halfway uh, you know at the midpoint M my cherry will go over here as well you see but at the top it sort of bobs down and comes out of the way I can then put the stalk in which is just a big tall curve little circle on top and that and then the rest of the cherry doesn't come from this little line here instead higher up there we go um, that works for drawing all sorts of little fruits, by the way. Apples and things. Don't draw it as a perfect circle. Draw it so that it's one curve that comes down and dips like that, and then the other one wants to go around the edge uh, and, and just go over the top. Okay. Uh, we want to put some little chunks on here. Rather than the, um, the little sesame seeds we had before, what we're going to do is draw... If you do a little triangle like this, that's pretty good going. We're happy with him. Um, and then you can make it look like he's sort of nicely nestled in your thick chunky cream like so and we're just gonna do these little triangles like that and then just little bounces underneath like that to make it look like they are sat there and um, every now and again just throw in a perfect square or well I say it's a perfect square it's just it would be a perfect square if it kept going and then to make it look like 3d little chunks of um, fudge and things what we do is we draw a little line, just like we did with the, the cheese on the burger. We have these little lines like this, and it makes it look like they're tiny little cubes that are wedged in. To our cream, okay? Um, so, we've got the top sorted. I think that's looking pretty good. I might put a little bit of extra cream just there to structurally support my cherry. There we go, that's better. Um, and now the really, really fun bit. 
and this is where you can't really go wrong compared to the burger where you had to sort of do things in order and make sure you didn't overlap and things sundays are really cool because they just sort of all mesh on top of each other so they're very very easy to do um what we have to do now is trace a line that's going to go all the way from here not quite joining up with the uh the cream and things and it's going to go all the way down curves round at the bottom and then comes back up i'm actually cheating because i'm now coming down to meet it look but there you go okay and this inside is where all the action is going to be this is going to be all the juicy stuff um to divide it up we're going to put in some chocolate sauce that's been squirted in there I, I, somebody said the deathly hallows i don't get that i don't know what that means i'm, I'm afraid i'm i don't read harry potter um but here we go i'm a children's book author who doesn't read harry potter you can imagine how much stick i get in my job um right if we do some big wibbly wobbly upside uh, uppy downy lines like that this is going to be where we have got our um, our squirty cream. Uh, sorry, our squirty cream, our, our squirty chocolate sauce. And the trick to doing it and making it look real is that it doesn't want to be perfect. It wants to get thinner and thicker every time we do one of these underneath. There we go. And when you colour these in, colour in light brown, dark brown and light brown, it will look really, really good, I promise you. Um, in the bottom of this one as well, what you also always get in, in every Sunday is a little bit that's the same as this. It's chocolate sauce, but it all pulls up at the bottom. So you can do this here. Same thing like that. And there we go. That there is going to be chocolate sauce. And to just sort of actually turn it into chocolate sauce. Let's make sure that I remember I'm going to make that nice and dark. That's going to be very, very dark chocolate sauce. Um, and at the bottom of our glass, we're going to have a fella sat right at the bottom who is going to be a scuba diver. He's going to be sat there with a snorkel, enjoying himself, having a lovely time, eating all of our um, yummy things that we've got in here and all the extra things we're going to add in a second. And to make him go in there, what we do, we do the same sort of shape head as we've done before, but I'm going to leave a little gap just after I've done the curve for the back of his head. We'll see why in one second. And here is going to be the snorkel that connects up to his mouth so he can breathe under, I say underwater, it's under chocolate sauce really, isn't it? So let's draw, draw his snorkel. It's the same sort of head as before. I've not quite finished it off yet, but this little gap is so important because I can stick a snorkel in like this that connects up to his mouth. Put two little dots in for his eyes. And he's also going to be wearing goggles, okay? Now, at this point, because I've got the uh, the snorkel in and I'm happy with it, I can finish off the back of his head, like so. But his, his um, goggles and his snorkel are going to be joined together with a band. And here's how you do them. You draw... It's like a sausage shape or a rounded rectangle there, all the way around. You could draw a perfectly square rectangle, it's up to you. That's going to be his goggles. And then to make it look 3D, we make it thicker on one side. And so if you're doing it like me, you want to do it on the left hand side, that'll make it look thick. And we then put the band over there that is holding his snorkel and his goggles on. And again, you can make it look 3D just by making it go a little bit beyond the edge of his head. It just adds a little bit of extra believability. Um, he's going to be sat there. He's going to be quite happy sitting in the bottom so depending upon where your chocolate sauce is you will draw you know two little lines down for his arms and you might have a full circle there for his hand or like me you might end up with it dipping into the uh, the chocolate sauce um, he's then gonna have two little feet we'll worry about his body in a second his feet want to be nice big chunky things that almost touch his chin but not quite so again, they might be completely um, sort of round little bean shapes for you if you've got the space, uh, but if not, that's fine. And then to put his tummy in there, well, we want to start right underneath where his eyes are, and then we want to flick out at 45 degrees. It's a really gentle little thing, but there you go. And there's our scuba diver sat underneath all the yummy things. Uh, we're going to put some little chocolate balls in. Chocolate balls are very easy to do. They're all going to pile up at the bottom. Very therapeutic. 
and just fill in any space you have with little round ball shapes. And then we're going to spread them out as we get higher up. And I'm not going to do loads and loads, I'm deliberately leaving a little gap here because in this space we're not going to have just the, the little balls, we're also going to put in some big chunky fudge stuff. Um, we will put in um, some shapes and like we did up here if you guys can remember that we did the, um, the little points, then we added the lines afterwards. That's how we make things look 3D. 3D. Um, I know there's so many of you that, because you're at different ages, you might have drawn in 3D before, you might not. But there's a really cool trick to drawing a, a dice or um, a sugar cube or anything like that in 3D. And this is it. You might recognise this sort of a shape. Anybody seen this shape before? If you have, you can type it underneath. Anybody know what that shape is there, what we call that? I will wait for somebody to type the answer in. Um, it is called an Andy shape. No, it's not an Andy shape. It's a hexagon, okay? And this hexagon can be turned into a dice in 3D really easily. All you have to do is draw lines that go towards the centre of it. Okay? And that turns it into a... yeah. Oh, thank, thank you, Gemma. Yes, it is. It's a hexagon. Uh, and that turns it into a dice. Well, if we wanted to do that here and make it look like we've got something that's like squidgy fudge pieces, not a perfect dice shape. That looks like it's got really hard edges. Instead, what we can do is we can do the same thing, which is draw a hexagon. They have little points on top. But this time, I'm making the edges a little bit wibbly wobbly. OK, you can see here just on this extra bit of paper I'm doing. Wibbly wobbly means it looks like it's got rough edges. And rather than joining it up perfectly in the middle like we did here, we just put in a couple of extra lines to suggest that it's got that sort of shape to it. And so whilst one of those looks like an actual dice or a cube or a cardboard box, this dude, this one doesn't. And this is what we're going for. That's the effect that we want. So in the background here, just sat above our little um, scuba diver, we're going to put in a few of these shapes. And where you've got the, um, the chocolate sauce, you can even use that. You know, if it goes up and down, you can even use that as a point. Like that. There we go. You can use that as a point where one of your uh, cubes is going to go up to. And then same over here. I'm going to put another one in. I've already got sort of a curved shape here. These ones are a bit sort of upside downy compared to those ones, but that's fine. And they'd be stacked on top of each other, so depending upon how much space you've got left, depends what kind of shapes you might put in. But you can often just put in like a little, like we did on the cheese, just sort of like a little V shape. And there you go, that starts to look like we've got chunks of um, stuff in there. Uh, the final bit, you'll notice that we've got this little space at the top. Um, this little space at the top needs to have something in. This is going to have bubbles in because it's like a chocolate mousse. And that's going to have a big bubble and then little bubbles next to it. And all it is is alternating between drawing a big bubble and a little bubble. Now, again, a mathematical thing here is you would actually find, if you were doing this for real, you would end up with more little bubbles and lots of them more than you'd end up with big bubbles. So put in a few big bubbles. And a few little ones. You can even have them bunching together at the top if you want to make it look like all the little bubbles are rising to the surface. And the trick is as well, it's like when you draw stars on an evening. Don't have them spaced out equally. Occasionally put a few right too close to each other, sat on top of each other. Not all the time, but just every now and again. They want to bunch up next to each other. And when you've done it, what you've got there is a, a fella. You've got a scuba diver at the bottom, look who is very much enjoying being stuck underneath all this chocolatey sauce. You've got his friend who is stuck upside down uh, going for death by chocolate by uh, trying to eat his way through the uh, the foam on top. A cherry because we're being healthy and that is one of our other five fruit and veg for the day. And then we've got all of these guys with our burger, our cheese, our bacon, our lettuce, our lovely deep fat fried onions, our, another burger, more sauce. Everything, everything, everything on top, all the way to the very, very top. Uh, and that is how you draw giant pe sorry, giant people, giant food and tiny people. Um, I hope you've very much enjoyed it, guys. If you have, very, very importantly, uh, just before you go, two things. First off, sign your illustrations. Um, super important because when you become super duper rich and famous, you can flog those on eBay for millions and millions. Who knows? I might even buy one as a retirement fund. 
And the other thing, just before you disappear, uh, I do want to remind you that I always use the hashtag DrawWithAndy. D-R-A-W-W-I-T-H-A-N-D-Y. And if you guys use that too, when you put your designs on Facebook or Twitter, I will be able to find it and see it. Um, I'd love to see it. Somebody somewhere will get a copy of my award-winning picture book, I Have an Orange Juicy Drink. Um, and to be fair to you guys as well, um, I want to give you guys, like I said at the very, very start, uh, I wanted to give every single one of you uh, a chance to buy one of my, my books. Um, and I want to give it to you at a discounted price as well. Um, so today, hang on, I'm giving you guys, if you want it, you can get 50% off my book by going to shortandsmiley.com. There it is. And using the promo code THANKS50. It's only valid for today because I can't afford to run this promotion forever. It's just more of a thank you for everyone that's been joining in with the sessions. And if you feel really cheeky, try um, THANKS51 uh, to get 51% off. But whatever you do, do not, do not, do not go there and type in THANKS52. Uh, whatever you do, don't do that. Uh, right, guys, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this. This one has run over by about 20 minutes longer than I anticipated. Uh, thank you very much for sticking with me. I've had a lovely time. I've really enjoyed drawing these guys with you. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to draw things with, say, squishy edges, uh, about drawing, say, dice with hard edges. Just use hexagons and join them up. I hope you've had fun doing this. And um, I hope you've learned about Dimitri Mendeleev. If you haven't, Google him. He was awesome. What an amazing guy. Um, and um, I hope you've just had fun in general. Right, thank you very much. Uh, next week, I will be putting it to a vote again. Again, um, I will let you guys choose what I'm going to be doing. I will post it on Facebook and you guys will have to vote and decide what we are going to do. Um, we might do sea monsters, we might do jungle animals, or we might do something else altogether. I will let you vote. And uh, this was chosen by you guys last week. We will choose again for next week. Right. I will see you folks next Wednesday. Uh, thank you very much. This video will go onto my webpage uh, just after it's finished, once it's all been processed by Facebook. And you guys will be able to watch it back there to your heart's content later. Thank you very much. Love you guys lots. Bye bye.